Good morning. This is Pastor Mark Hendricks of Jasper Pentecostal Church. And uh, welcome to my ministry recording for Sunday, May 31st. It's uh, Pentecost Sunday. And uh, so we celebrate uh, the coming of the Holy Spirit uh, on the original day of Pentecost, but also his uh, abiding presence uh, in the world and uh, in our own lives, in the lives of those who belong to Christ Jesus uh, by faith and uh, his continued ministry within us uh, and uh, among us and in the world, uh, testifying about Jesus and uh, uh, expanding his kingdom, advancing his kingdom uh, through the powerful ministry of uh, the Holy Spirit and his work in our lives. So it's a wonderful gift uh, from the Father God to uh, celebrate. And uh, so uh, I wish you uh, a happy and uh, inspiring Pentecost Sunday. And as we uh, join our hearts in uh, worship and uh, uh, remembering uh, the word of God uh, about uh, the Holy Spirit, I pray that uh, your hearts will be uh, touched by the Holy Spirit and inspired uh, for works of service and ministry uh, uh, for the sake of the gospel and Christ Jesus. I'm going to be speaking today about baptism in the Holy Spirit from Acts chapter 8, the so-called uh, Samaritan Pentecost. I also have uh, a couple songs that I'd like to uh, sing with you. Uh, and uh, these are about the Holy Spirit, and they are both prayers for the ministry of the Holy Spirit, prayers for the, uh, the Holy Spirit to come and uh, do his work uh, within uh, each one of us who uh, raise our hearts uh, toward heaven and toward uh, the Savior Jesus and, uh, and invite uh, his baptism and his infilling and uh, his... Uh, ministry of his spirit uh, within our hearts and lives. Uh, the first one I uh, have to sing is uh, Consuming Fire uh, by Tim Hughes. Uh, Consuming Fire. And uh, the uh, second one uh, will be uh, Holy Spirit, uh, written by uh, Brian and Kobe Torwalt, and uh, uh, more popularly uh, sung or performed by uh, Carrie Jo. Holy Spirit. Consuming fire, 
welcome you to uh, take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 8, and we'll read uh, verses 14 to 17. Acts chapter 8, verses 14 to 17. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. When they arrived, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them. They had simply been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Father God, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit that you have given in the name of our Savior Jesus. And I pray as we recall this coming of your Spirit upon the Samaritan converts to Christ, that you would, Lord, speak to us about the ministry of the Holy Spirit today and within our lives and uh, in, uh, within our spirits also. And I pray that uh, you will inspire us, uh, Lord, to uh, welcome your Holy Spirit, to welcome his ministry, welcome his infilling, and uh, welcome his baptism. And so I pray that you will speak this way to us through uh, this account. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. As I turned and was about to take a seat by the fire, I received a mighty baptism of the Holy Ghost. Without any expectation of it, the Holy Spirit descended upon me in a manner that seemed to go through me, body and soul. 
No words can express the wonderful love that was shed abroad in my heart. I wept aloud with joy. That is the recorded testimony of the 19th century American evangelist, Charles Finley, Finney. And God used Charles Finney to inspire a great revival in the society of his time, a movement that has often been called the Second Great Awakening. This account in Acts is about the baptism in the Holy Spirit of new Samaritan converts to faith in Christ Jesus. And their baptism illustrates for you and me how the Spirit can still come mightily and fill and overflow us. When the apostles in Jerusalem hear that Samaritans have received the gospel message, the leaders send their two most prominent members, Peter and John, to confirm the report. Since the persecution that has begun with the death of Stephen, many Christians have fled from Jerusalem into the surrounding regions of Judea and Samaria. Philip is one of the seven wise and spiritual men whom the church has appointed to serve in the administration of its practical affairs. But the deacon Philip has also left Jerusalem. He has come to a certain town within Samaria and has begun to proclaim the message that Jesus of Nazareth is the Christ, the Messiah, or the Savior. As Philip has preached, the Holy Spirit has confirmed the message of the evangelist to his Samaritan listeners by performing miraculous signs through him, just like the miracles the apostles have performed in Jerusalem. In verse 14, reports about what is happening in Samaria soon reach the leaders of the Jerusalem church, and the apostles decide to send representatives to ensure the authenticity of what has happened there. In general, the Jewish people hold Samaritans in contempt because they are the racially mixed descendants of Israelites and because they do not properly observe the scriptural law of Moses. But during his earthly life, Jesus himself has readily ministered to Samaritans. He has welcomed them to believe in him, and he has even assured them of eternal salvation through believing in him. So the apostles of Jesus already have some precedent and guidance from the master himself for accepting Samaritan converts. But still, the church leaders are cautious because their Jewish scruples make them suspect their religiously unorthodox cousins. But in verse 15, when Peter and John arrive in the Samaritan town and meet the new believers in Christ, the apostles find that indeed the faith of the Samaritans is genuine. And so the apostles pray for them to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because, Luke, the writer of Acts, explains in verse 16, the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them. They had simply been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. In Jerusalem, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit has come upon the first Christians. And marvelously, they have begun to speak in tongues or languages they themselves have not understood. So when Peter and John arrive in this Samaritan town and confirm that the people there have believed in Jesus and that they have received water baptism in his name, the apostles pray that the experience of these new believers will become complete and full through a charismatic endowment of the Holy Spirit. 
Then, verse 17 reads, Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Spirit. The apostles placed their hands on these Samaritan converts to demonstrate their approval for them and to show that the Spirit who will come upon them is the very same Spirit who already rests on the apostles. And the result of their prayer and the laying on of hands is that the Samaritan believers begin to manifest the same sort of charismatic behavior that the first Christians have manifested on the day of Pentecost. The text does not mention these manifestations, but they are the visible signs and audible utterances that the apostles naturally look for to confirm that the Samaritans have received the same heavenly gift that has first fallen upon the believers in Jerusalem. And along with the expectations of the apostles, there is also the reaction of Simon the sorcerer, whom we read about in verses 18 and 19 just below. He is so impressed by the way the Holy Spirit has come upon the Samaritan believers that he offers the apostles money and asks them to grant him the same ability to bestow the wondrous charismatic gift of the Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit that the Samaritans received after they believed in Christ and were baptized in water is the endowment that you and I similarly long to receive. If you then, Jesus assures his disciples in Luke eleven thirteen, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And so, we are bold to ask for the gift of the Spirit. We ask and we keep on asking. We seek and we keep on seeking. And we knock on the door of heaven and keep on knocking until the Father grants us the outpouring and the infilling we will dearly long for. Of course, from the scriptures, we know we have already received the Holy Spirit when we have believed in Christ for our salvation. It is the Spirit himself who speaks within us to convict us about our sins, to testify to us about Jesus and the truthfulness of the gospel, and to assure us about our own spiritual adoption as the ever-living children of God. So whether we have spoken in tongues or prophesied or manifested any other charismatic sort of gift or not, we know that by simply believing in Christ, we have received the Holy Spirit and the forgiveness and salvation that God freely offers through his Son. But still, we long for more. We long for an outpouring, an infilling, an overflowing, a baptism in the Holy Spirit. We desire that the Spirit who has indwelled us since we have believed in Christ would also well up within us and overflow us like streams of living water. Be being filled in the Spirit, Paul says literally in Ephesians 5.18. Or in other words, be filled with the Spirit again and again. And the Apostle further urges, Speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And so, you and I gather for worship. Of course, we can't gather right now because of the virus and our health safety, but still we gather with our families and in our minds and spirits with our fellow church members. 
and we sing hymns of praise to the Savior Jesus and songs of invitation to the Holy Spirit. We ask him to come and fill us anew. We ask him to impassion us like a consuming inner fire. And we ask him to rain down on us like a mighty heavenly downpour. Among the people of Samaria whom Philip preached the gospel to, the Holy Spirit drove out demons and enabled cripples to walk. And when they saw the great signs and miracles, the Samaritans believed the evangelist and received water baptism by his hand. They were truly repentant believers in Christ and born again by the Spirit of God who was witnessing so powerfully to them through the ministry of Philip. But when the apostles Peter and John came, they prayed that the Samaritans would receive something more, that the Holy Spirit would come upon them and baptize them in the same charismatic way that he had baptized the Jewish disciples on the day of Pentecost. And you and I who have believed and have been baptized with water, we similarly wait on the Lord and pray for baptism in the Spirit. In the fire of a holy passion for Christ. And yes, even in the excited utterances of adoration and praise that necessarily rise and overflow from grateful and overjoyed hearts. Sometimes we lay hands on one another when we're not separated by health safety orders. We lay hands on one another just as the apostles laid hands on the Samaritans who received the charismatic spirit. And like them, we are inspired and excited by the understanding that the heavenly flame burning within our brothers and sisters will also ignite and burn within us. But whatever the means we use to awaken faith and arouse expectation in one another, we know the heavenly holy wind comes spiritually and invisibly. He comes from heaven and the Father above who has sent the Spirit. And he comes graciously and freely as a precious and powerful gift for those who love the Savior Jesus and who desire to serve him effectively. And yes, the Spirit also comes to each of us within our own homes as you and I wait upon him in shared expectation and as we join our hearts in common adoration for the heavenly baptizer, Christ Jesus. Nicky Gumbel is a minister in the Church of England. He is also an author and featured speaker for the well-known and much-viewed Alpha Course videos. In his talk about healing for today, Nicky tells about American pastor John Wimber coming to the church where Nicky attended and speaking about healing and the Holy Spirit. At the time, Nicky was a barrister or lawyer, and he was very skeptical about John Wimber and his ministry. But in one of the meetings, the Holy Spirit fell powerfully on Nicky Gumbel and profoundly changed his life. All I can say is that after about 30 seconds, I experienced the power of God in a way that I had never experienced before in my life. I know this is not true for everybody, but for me there was a physical manifestation. It was like 10,000 volts of electricity going through my body. In fact, it was so intense, I really couldn't take it anymore. So I started praying. 
No more power, Lord. I think John Wimber must have had difficult people in his meetings before because he said, oh, take that one out. <laughs> so they carried me out through the French windows of church house. And as I was being carried out, John Wimber said this. He said, God is giving that man the ability to tell people about Jesus. And so, Nicky Gumbel received a baptism in the Holy Spirit. That endowment enabled him to share the gospel in a winsome way and inspired him to develop the Alpha Chorus. And Alpha has brought thousands of souls around the world into a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Your glory. 
Canyon, Second Bridge. Moline Canyon, 